In today's video, I'm gonna share with you my three favorite things that I've learned while watching the Grayskill Gorilla's Guide to Redshift. Let's do it. Hey everybody, it's Nick here from Grayskill Gorilla, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now, if you've been following along, you may know that I have this new PC, this great new rig, and I've also been trying to learn Redshift. Well, it just so happens we have a guide to Redshift at Grayscale Gorilla that I was able to start watching right away. In fact, it's called Grayscale Gorilla's Guide to Redshift, and it came at a perfect time for me because I was just switching over to Redshift and I wanted to learn how to incorporate it into my renders. I've learned quite a lot from it, and uh, if you've seen my renders lately on Instagram, they've I, at least I feel like my game is really stepped up now that I use a third party renderer. So with that, let's head on in to Cinema 4D and let me show you my three favorite things that I've learned while watching the Grayscale Gorilla's Guide to Redshift. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and let's get started right away with the first tip and it's all about getting your clone colors to be represented inside of Redshift. You can see in this scene, we have a bunch of clones happening and we're using fields in uh, Cinema 4D R20 to drive not only their position, but also change their color. But you can see it's not being represented in the final render. Well, let me show you how to set this up in Redshift. First thing you need to do is make sure you apply a Redshift material to your cloner. If you don't have a material already set up, you can go to Create Redshift Materials Material and just drag this onto your cloner. Now, once you do that, you're gonna get something looks like this, right? You're not gonna get uh, the colors of your scene. So what you have to do next is double click, go into your edit shader graph. Now, in the Grayscale Gorilla's Guide to Redshift, they go into a ton of detail what all these nodes do and how to set up your own custom textures. But I just wanted to show you how to get these colors in there for now. And what you need is a data node. Now, this is the color user data node in particular. So all I did was type data in here and it found the one I wanted here, color user data. Drag this out into your shader graph. And then the next thing you need to do is tell this data node what you're looking for. So up in here, there's an attribute name. Right over here, you can choose MoGraph color. That's what you want. Still not done yet, it's not represented. We need to tie this node into our Redshift material and tell it what uh, we want it to color. Now to do that, all you have to do is go drag your out uh, little knob here. Just click and drag over to the blue section of your RS material. And as soon as you let go, all these properties are going to show up. This means that you could pipe this color into practically anything in your material. In our case, we just want it in our diffuse color channel. So I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna close out of our material and it should update right away, boom. Look at that. So now any colors that we change in our clones, anything we do with MoGraph and fields will now be represented. Uh, in fact, I have a second um, effector up here. Uh, it's actually a field, they call them. So we have a second uh, field that is coloring these clones, this green color, and you can see that that follows through as well. And so if we hit play, you can see all this animation, all the stuff that we're doing in our scene will now instantly be shown in our Redshift material. All right, let's jump right into the second tip. And this one's all about how to apply depth of field to your render. I knew right away when I started playing with Redshift that I was gonna throw depth of field on everything. It looks amazing. And in this render, I wanted to show you how to set it up. So what we have here, we have a, a really simple MoGraph scene. Let me turn off our render just so we can see the animation. We have a really simple MoGraph scene and we also have this uh, material that is on here from the Everyday Material Collection. And this is, uh, I think it's frosted glass. And it just looks beautiful, uh, but I figured a little bit or maybe a lot of depth of field will really make this thing shine. So how do you add it? Well, you wanna make sure you use uh, this on the camera that you want to do your final render on. In this case, I have a bunch of cameras in my scene, uh, some of them to animate uh, between. I'm using Gorilla Cam here to do the targeting. So I'm gonna add it to our Gorilla Cam. And uh, all you have to do is select the camera you want to add it to. You go to tags and you go to uh, your Redshift tags and add a Redshift camera. Now the next thing you wanna do is make sure that this tag is selected. 
go to the Boca tab over here and turn on enabled. And after that, to control the blurriness, the amount of blur to your depth of field, you can do that right here with this slider, the COC radius. Uh, and this stands for circle of confusion. I learned that from watching the training. And you could crank this thing up and get, boom, that sexy redshift blur right away in your scene. So. I think you could go pretty far with this effect. I like the idea that these uh, letters are kind of unreadable at first, and then as they uh, resolve, they get nice and clear. Um, so that's, you know, you can adjust all this stuff um, as you go, and you can see how fast the depth of field renders as well. Just been loving this feature inside of it, and I wanted to make sure that you knew how to set up depth of field. All right, let's jump right into the third and final tip, and this one's all about render settings, and in particular, how to set up your scene for a grain-free render and in the least amount of time. Now, any new render handles samples and, and render settings much differently, and Redshift has their own way of doing things. In particular, they use samples in almost everything. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the dome light here, and you can see that there's this sample slider. Now this exists on practically every light, every material inside of Redshift. Now in the past, when I just first started playing with Redshift, I thought the way to clean up your scene was to go into Redshift and start cranking these numbers way up. And what I learned by watching the Redshift training, and they go into a lot more detail in, uh, in the um, actual training, um, but what I learned is you want to dial these up last. And you want to start to turn up your other uh, samples in other parts of, of uh, cinema. So in this case, we're going to start to turn up our light samples, essentially, you know, cranking more light data into the scene. And, and that will start to clean up our render without having to turn up our final brute force render. So let me show you what I mean. Uh, let's use a different camera angle for this. I'm gonna use our overhead camera. Let's go ahead and uh, zoom in here and start to look at some of this grain that's happening in this render. So let's go to original size. I'm gonna highlight this and go to 100%. I'm gonna use uh, the Alt button to pan around here. I'm gonna throw a bunch of tips at you for this one. And then we're going to uh, shift drag to make a little window that I only want to render a part of. This will help us look at just this one little part and start to dial in settings. And as this cleans up, we can compare it to where it was out, out here. Okay, so what else can we do to get ready? Here's another bonus tip. This bucket window will allow us to see the final render, right? So with this on, you're gonna see this is the final render quality. And you can see we have a ton of grain here, especially in this shadow. Let, let, let me move this up and show you. Check out all that grain. Well, the first thing we're gonna do to um, try to clean up any lighting grain is to turn up the samples on our light. Now, uh, the other tip is to try to do these uh, samples in multiples of two. So wherever it is now, try to go up by two. Let's go to 64. And you can see it's gonna recalculate, and that's not nearly enough. So something to keep in mind, and, and this was uh, interesting to learn, you can actually crank these up really high. I'm gonna go up to 512. That happens to be a multiple as well. And now you can see we're cleaning up this grain a ton. Compare this to over here. And uh, you could do this again, 10, uh, 24 it is. Let's see, boom. And you can see the render is getting slower, but much more clear. And look at that, now this is much more clear than over here. Now, uh, once this is set up, um, you want to go into your uh, render settings and then start to turn these numbers up. Um, and that's really the difference. That's really the tip I'm trying to share with you guys is don't crank these up first, turn up your samples in your lights, turn up your samples in your global illumination. Here's the brute force uh, GI samples that we're using. Maybe we need to turn up some of these as well. Let's go to 512. It might be a little bit overkill, but let's see the difference. And it's taking a little bit longer, but again, less 
grain in our shadows. Look at how clean that is compared to that. Hope you could see that on your monitor. But this is really the tip. Concentr put your samples where they matter. Uh, and, and that's like a quote from the training that I got. And it really does hold true. It speeds up your render if you put them up front. Now, if you want more detail about all the settings and all the other ways you can um, be more efficient with your rendering, definitely check out the Redshift guide. But I wanted to share with you this tip because I wanted you to think about samples the right way to begin with. Thanks everybody. And don't forget, if you're looking to add Redshift to your 3D workflow, don't forget to check out our Grayscale Gorillas guide to Redshift. I've been having a ton of fun watching and learning it. So please, if you're learning Redshift, please check out our training. And with that, I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye, everybody.